everyone, Monica here and welcome to my channel. In today's tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to sew this wrap dress, which has literally been the most requested video I have ever had. I really hope you enjoy the video and let's get sewing. For this dress, I used a little over two and a half yards of a smooth feeling four-way stretch fabric and it's important that it stretches so we get a great fit without having to make darts. You'll also need a fitted shirt with sleeves to use as a template, and the sewing supplies listed in the video's description. Begin by finding the point where the shirt hits your natural waist, and fold the fabric below that point up out of the way. Fold your sleeve in and adjust it so you can see the curved shape of the armhole, and do the same with the other sleeve so the outline of the shirt looks like this. Fold it in half right down the center, and this will be our template. Fold a piece of your fabric over several inches wider than the folded shirt and lay the shirt down so that the folds line up. Pin it down and cut a half inch larger to add seam allowance around the neckline, shoulder, armhole, and side. We're cutting the bodice and skirt all at once, so to do that I cut a diagonal line out from the waist that got about 7 inches wider at the bottom. I do eventually take in the skirt a little so it's a bit more tapered and not as flared, but for now it's fine if you cut yours like I have here, and then once we can try the dress on, I'll show you how and why I make that easy adjustment. Cut the bottom 2 to 3 inches longer than your desired length so it doesn't wind up too short if you have to trim any of the pieces. Remove the shirt and unfold the fabric and you'll have the back dress piece cut out, which should look like this. We'll use this as a guide to cut out the two front pieces, but instead of having both sides of the skirt flared out, one side of each front piece will be cut in a straight line down from the waist, so fold one side of the skirt in to make that straight edge. And here I'm just folding it back behind the dress the same way so you can see the shape more clearly and pinning it so it stays. Lay it onto a single layer of fabric and pin it down everywhere but in the red area because we'll be cutting that part a little differently for the neckline. Cut around the shape of the flared side and the bottom edge of the dress, then cut along the armhole and shoulder on the flared side. Cut along the folded edge next, but be super careful not to cut into the top layers of fabric or you'll ruin the back dress piece. When you get to the point where the dress will hit you underneath your bust, stop cutting and fold the back dress piece out of the way. Cut a gentle curve up to the inside of the opposite shoulder, which will create the v-neck when the dress is wrapped around you. Remove the back dress piece and turn the fabric right side up and you'll have one front dress piece cut out. Pin it onto your fabric with the correct sides together and cut around it so you get a left and a right front dress piece. And now you'll have three dress pieces cut out. Lay one front piece onto the back with correct sides together and pin and sew along the shoulder and side using a half inch seam allowance for all your seams. Since we're using stretch fabric, use a ballpoint needle and sew all the seams and hems with a stretch stitch or a zigzag stitch, which will allow the seams to stretch without breaking. Move the front piece out of the way and lay and pin the other front piece down along the shoulder and side. We have to leave a small gap in the stitches on this side to feed the tie through to close the dress, so to see where that gap should be, Bring the front piece you just sewed back down across the dress. Follow the neckline down to where it meets the side of the dress, and you'll need to leave a 3 quarter inch gap in the stitches there. Move that top layer out of the way again and mark that gap with a double set of pins. Sew along the shoulder and side, and when you get to the first set of pins, remove them and backstitch several times to secure the thread. Begin sewing again at the next set of pins about 3 quarters of an inch down, again backstitching to leave that gap. And now the neckline should meet right at that opening. We have to hem the side of both front pieces next, so open up the dress and lay it with the wrong side up. Fold the side of the dress over about half of an inch, then fold it again another half inch and pin it down. 
Double fold the next section a half inch at a time, smooth out the fabric so it lays flat, and pin it. And repeat this process along the entire edge. So using a wider stretch or zigzag stitch to help all your hems lay flat. This smoother type of spandex knit is one of my favorites because it always sews nicely, but once in a while I'll sew a stretch fabric where the hem looks wavy, especially on lighter knits. Sometimes one stitch will hem better than another, so I really suggest testing a few stitches on a scrap hem of your fabric to see what works best for you. Now lay the other front side with the wrong side up and repeat that process of double folding along the entire edge, pinning, and sewing to hem it, so now both edges are neatly finished. To make the sleeves, lay your shirt sleeve like so, so this top folded edge is completely straightened out and this curved armhole seam looks like half of a bell shape. Lay the edge of a see-through piece of paper onto the sleeve's folded edge and begin tracing along that curved armhole seam. Continue along the inside edge, making the sleeve any length you'd like, then draw a straight line back to the edge of the paper and mark where that folded edge was. Remove the shirt and draw new lines a half inch larger for seam and hem allowance, then cut along those new lines and you'll have a sleeve pattern that looks like this, although your sleeve could be longer. Fold a piece of your fabric over, pin the pattern onto the fold, and cut around it so you have one sleeve, then cut a second sleeve. Fold them in half with correct sides together and pin and sew along this edge then turn them right side out. Use a straight pin to mark the very top of the curve on each sleeve, which is where they'll sit at your shoulders. With the sleeve right side out and the dress inside out, flip the sleeve over and slide it in through the armhole. Match up the dress's shoulder seam to the pin on the sleeve and pin them together, always opening up and flattening out the seam allowances when pinning. Then match up and pin the underarm seams as well. Line up and pin the edges of the pieces together more frequently around the rest of the armhole, then sew to attach the sleeve and repeat for the other sleeve. Hem them by double folding the edge a quarter inch at a time, pinning and sewing, so now both sleeves are neatly finished. To finish the neckline, we're making a fabric binding that covers the raw edges and then extends off both sides for the ties. So start by measuring all the way around the neckline. Mine was 44 inches. We have to add the amount we need for the ties to that number, and I found that 32 inches per tie was a good size. So add 32 to your neckline for one tie and 32 for the other. I got 108 inches total. Cut a strip of fabric for the binding that measures the number you got by two and a half inches, and I had to sew two pieces together at the center to make my strip. Turn the dress inside out and mark the center back of the neck with a straight pin. Find the center of your strip of fabric, flip it so the wrong side faces up, and pin it down onto the center of the neck. Line up the edge of the strip along the next part of the neckline, smoothing it so it lays flat, and pin them together again. Continue pinning around the entire back of the neck, making sure the strip is nice and taut as you pin, because if it's really loose, it won't lay right when you sew it down. Turn it over and bring one side of the strip around to the front of the dress, pinning it to the shoulder and lining it up down the curve of the neck. Pin it into place all the way down the neckline, again making sure to smooth out the strip so it lays taut against the fabric. When you finish pinning, leave that extra fabric hanging off for the tie and move that side out of the way. Repeat the process by pinning the strip of fabric down the other front side so that it's now pinned around the entire neckline. Start at one edge of the dress and sew the strip into place around the neckline, stopping at the opposite edge. Turn the dress right side out and open it so you can see the front neckline of one side. Bring the strip of fabric up so it sits above the dress with its wrong side facing up and hold the seam allowance so it sits on top of that strip. Fold the top edge of the strip down about a half inch, then fold it down a second time so it completely covers up the seam allowance and stitching and pin it into place. 
Hold the next section of seam allowance in place, fold the strip of fabric down a half inch, and fold it down again so it covers up the stitching. Smooth it out so it lays neatly and pin it down, and you'll see that this starts to create a neat binding around the neckline. Repeat this process of double folding the strip of fabric and pinning it into place along the entire neckline, taking care to make sure the fabric is completely smoothed out as you go. The more you do this, the quicker and easier it becomes until before you know it, you're at the opposite end of the neckline. When you get to the fabric for the tie, fold the bottom edge up a half inch, fold the top edge down a half inch, then fold it down one more time and pin it together so you create a seamless transition from the neckline to the tie. Again, fold the bottom edge up, fold the top edge down, and fold it down one more time, continuing this process to the end of the fabric to create a clean, neat tie for the dress. Go back to the other side of the dress and make the tie the same way by folding and pinning the fabric, then secure the binding by sewing down one tie, continuing around the neckline, and finishing at the other tie. Use the same stitch you've used for all your hems, and now you have a neat finish around the neckline and ties. Finish the ends of the ties by double folding them a quarter inch at a time and sewing them down. Now that I could try the dress on, I saw that because I cut the skirt so flared out, but my fabric isn't really structured, the sides hung down lower so it wasn't even. Check to see if yours does the same thing, and if so, it's an easy fix. We just have to cut some of the flared part off into a straight line that will make a right angle at the bottom rather than a point. I trimmed almost three inches off so that my skirt would curve out to give room for my hips, but it wouldn't be so flared. Trim yours a little at a time and pin the side together to make sure it works evenly, and when it does, cut the other side the same shape. Sew it back together so that now the dress is even when you wear it. Trim it an inch longer than your desired length for hem allowance. Then double fold the fabric a half inch at a time and sew it down. To wrap it, feed the tie through the gap you left in the side seam, pull the dress closed, and tie the ties however you'd like. And now your dress is ready to wear. Thank y'all for watching! Someone coming with a dog, let me get out of the way.